This is Kate Crowley from Teachers College, Columbia University in New York City. This is module 1.2 of Cleft Palate Speech and Feeding video tutorials. In this module, we're going to look at what happens in the development of the mouth of a child with cleft lip and palate. Hello, I'm Miriam Baigori, bilingual speech language pathologist at Teachers College, Columbia University. Here we see a child with a unilateral cleft lip. Let's look in this child's mouth to see what happens during embryology. So you see in this child's mouth the incisive foramen. You see that point right there, the yellow dot. From that point up to the nose, it didn't completely fuse, leading to that unilateral cleft lip that you saw in that prior picture. Here in, this, in these pictures, you see a child with a bilateral cleft lip before surgery and then after surgery. With this child, during embryological development, both sides didn't fuse. So if you see in the picture the yellow dot, the incisive foramen, leading up to the nostrils, both sides didn't fuse together, leading to that bilateral cleft lip. Here in this picture, you see that there's a bilateral cleft lip and palate. So the whole area didn't fuse during embryology. The lips didn't fuse together, the palate didn't fuse together, and the uvula also didn't fuse together. Because it didn't fuse together, you see the premaxilla that protrudes upward, because there's no area for that to fuse to hold on to, so it moves up. So here you see a child's mouth, and during embryology, the areas did not fuse, so it's wide open. The premaxilla is that area that we saw previously, the triangular-shaped area where the lips come together and the part, some part of the hard palate comes together from the incisive foramen anteriorly. And that area didn't fuse and so it's not holding on to anything and it's just hanging from the top. That area is also an area where teeth grow in. So you'll see in some children who are too young for teeth to grow in yet, it just looks like bare skin. And in other children, you might actually see a tooth growing out of it. That whole area does not it does not hurt. It's not an extra piece of skin growing from the child's nose. It's not a cut. It's just that, that it, the tissues did not fuse together. The muscles didn't come together, and so it's wide open. That's the premaxilla again. So that's from the incisive foramen all the way up to the lips. Since the, that triangular shape didn't fuse to the sides, it just hangs from the top. Here's another premaxilla. Again, it's not an extra piece of tissue, it's just a tissue that is not where it should be. A child's old enough to have teeth growing, and since that area is not in the child's mouth, it's sticking out of the child's mouth, the tooth will be coming out of that area. So there are different types of cleft lips. There's a unilateral cleft lip, which means it would be only on one side of the child's face. There's a bilateral cleft lip, which means that both sides of the lip are affected. There's a complete cleft lip, which means that it's from the lip all the way through up to the nose. And then there's an incomplete where it doesn't go all the way up to the nose, it just goes up a little bit, either one side or both sides. So here you see a normal, typical face. The lips aren't affected, there's no cleft. Here in this person's face, you see that there is a unilateral, incomplete cleft lip. So there's a little bit of clefting on one side of the child's face. It does not reach all the way up to the nose, it just goes a little bit. It didn't fuse all the way. Then in a unilateral complete cleft lip, the clefting goes all the way from the lip all the way up to the nose. For a bilateral complete cleft lip, both sides are completely open. So from the lip all the way up to the nose. So now let's look at different types of cleft palates and how they're classified. So in the first picture, you see a normal palate. All the areas fused during embryology and there's no clefting. In the next picture, in the second picture, you see a submucous cleft. So if you look closely, you see the uvula at the back of the child's mouth, and there's a little cleft by the uvula, so it's split. Then there's a unilateral complete, which means that it goes from the nose, that one side of the nose, because it's unilateral, and it goes all the way back down to the back of the velum. There's a bilateral complete cleft, which means both sides of the nostrils are affected, and then the whole complete palate is open too and that would be a bilateral complete cleft. So in this picture, you see the incisive foramen, that yellow dot, and posteriorly to that, the palate and up to the uvula, it didn't fuse. So that would be a cleft palate. 
because it's wide open in that area. In these pictures, you see a cleft of the soft palate. So in that area, the part of the velum, the uvula, it didn't close, and so it's open. And in the next picture, there's a cleft of a hard and soft palate. So the soft palate, or the velum, is open, and it goes all the way up to the hard palate. And in this picture, it'd be a unilateral cleft lip, since only one lip, is, one side of the lip is affected. Let's look in this child's mouth. So in this child's mouth, you see a wide open hole. The child has a cleft palate. If you look a little further up, you can see that the nose, the opening of the nose, is a little flattened, and there might be a little scar there above the child's lip. So it looks like there was probably also a unilateral cleft lip, but that was repaired. So in this picture, you don't see the opening of the lip, we just see the opening of the palate because that part has not been repaired yet. In this child's mouth, we see the same. We see a big open hole in the child's mouth, a cleft palate, and it also looks like this child had a cleft lip because you see one nostril is affected and you see a little bit of scarring from the surgery of the cleft lip. This child has a wide open hole, also a cleft palate, awaiting for surgery. And in this child's mouth, you also see a cleft palate, but if you look at the child's lips, it looks like the child has no scarring, his nostrils are fully sized, and so there was no clefting of the child's lips, it was just a clefting of the palate. We just spoke about cleft lip and palate that are obvious. Our next module considers the factors related to submucous cleft palates and occult submucous clefts. We will also talk about another hole in the mouth called a fistula in a later module. This concludes module 1.2. Next is module 1.3, submucous clefts and occult clefts. Remember that all these materials are available at Leaders Project.